Hello and welcome to 12 Steps to Poker Heaven, the series that allows you to become a better poker player. My name is Carmel Thomas and with me today I have our very own poker expert, that's Mr Grub Smith. How are you doing Grub? I am ready to go, thank you very much, looking forward to it. That's very good to hear Grub. I mean throughout the last few years uh, poker has really exploded onto the world stage. Everybody wants to play poker. It's become the darling of the card games played all around the world. I mean whether it's businessmen, housewives, students, they've all been addicted uh, recently to poker. I mean, everybody wants to play. A lot of people believe they can play, but only a few really know how to play. In this series, we're going to take you through the 12 steps to teaching you how to become a better poker player. We're going to go through the fundamentals of poker, uh, from the basics to the actual strategies as well. We're going to cover everything at all, from position at the poker table, to uh, pre-flop play, heads up play, and also the art of bluffing. Now this uh, may sound a little bit confusing to you, uh, and to me a little bit as well, and that's why we have Grub here to help us with this. So Grub, what can our viewers expect from this series? Well, they're going to get a thorough breakdown of the game of poker. We're going to begin with the basic principles, use them as building blocks as we begin to learn about the dark arts, the deeper mysteries of the game. Uh, we're going to have footage from past tournaments, including the Poker Heaven Super 6 shootout, so there'll be plenty of examples of how to play, and more importantly, when you're thinking about saving money, how not to play. Mm. We're going to see players like Tony G, Gus Hansen, Dave the Devilfish Elliot, so there'll be some, some masters at work. Masters at work. So uh, where do we start? Coming up in this show, we'll look at the first two steps in our poker ladder. Step one, that's the introduction to poker. We'll begin with the origins of the game, how it developed a couple of centuries ago. Then we'll look at the different versions of poker and also the different types of games available. Single table tournaments, multi-table tournaments and cash games. Then the ranking of hands from the very worst cards all the way to the Royal Flush will show you what beats what. And lastly, how to play Texas Hold'em, the most popular version of poker. We'll explain everything from the antis, the blinds, to going all in at the end. The second step is hold cards. These are the cards that only you get to see. Of course, any two cards can win, but it's vital to get your strategy correct right from the start. So let's start at the very beginning, Grub. Where did poker come from? Well, it's steeped in mystery, of course. Uh, some people say it's based on an ancient Persian game called Aznez. Other people blame the Germans. <laughs> but uh, actually, the people who are to blame are sailors, because it was in the port of New Orleans that they started playing poker as we know it today. Then, as the, uh, the West expanded and the Americans moved towards, you know, chasing gold and chasing land, uh, they, they took the game with them. It's very easy. All you need is a pack of cards. Mm -hmm. These were men who needed to gamble, as we all do. Uh, so it's very portable. Even when you're being shot at by the Indians, you could play poker. Uh, and then in about... Uh, the, the, the sort of big development in poker was in 1970, uh, when Binion's Casino hosted the first ever World Championship. Uh, now, there were only seven people in that first World Championship, so even I would have stood a chance. Uh, now you get about nine or ten thousand. Uh, and the first man who won was a gentleman called Johnny Moss. So here's to Johnny. Yes, to Johnny. And I think, uh, Grubby, you'll agree with me, poker is no longer played in seedy back rooms. It play, it's played in front of cameras, under the media spotlight for millions and millions of pounds. I mean, what started this big boom, this public craze? Well, you can still play it in seedy back rooms. Just come <laughs> I'm out sure of my you house. do as well. I, I, I certainly <laughs> do. Uh, I think there were the two big things which make, move poker into the mainstream uh, were the internet. Obviously, it's yeah. incredibly easy to play on the internet. Everyone knows there's been a big boom in internet sites um, when, and what's called the Chris Moneymaker effect. Chris Moneymaker was an internet qualifier who paid $30 to enter the World Series, uh, a satellite tournament online, and eventually won it, won several million dollars. Uh, and everybody realised that it's not like the Olympics or mm. football. You, can't, you can actually just turn up and win. As long as you're good enough and lucky enough, you can take on the professionals and beat them. The other factor is what's called the whole card camera. Now, before, you just used to watch poker players sitting around a table and you couldn't see what their cards were. But once they invented that little camera that fits in the table, you can be part of the game and you're inside their head. You're thinking what they're thinking. Brilliant. Now, Grub, Texas Hold'em is definitely the focus of our attention in this series. But, of course, there are so many poker games played all over the world. But why is Texas Hold'em so popular and at the forefront? Well, they call Texas Hold'em the Cadillac of poker, and that's because it offers a unique combination of skill, psychology, and luck. 
and that spices up the action. You never really know what you're going to get. There are other types of poker, as you say. If you've ever seen The Cincinnati Kid, that great film with Steve McQueen, you'll see that they're playing five-card stud. That's a slightly more staid and conventional version of poker. But there are plenty of other games which offer action. Uh, Omaha is a game where you start with four cards. You can play high-low games where the best hand and the worst hand can split the pot. Mm -hmm. uh, Raz is all low. And then there are some crazy wild-card variations called things like Spit in the Ocean or, <laughs> or Zulu Wardrobe is one of my favorites. Um, there's also different ways of playing Texas Hold'em. It's not just uh, one simple size fits all. You can play a cash game. That's where you can keep taking money out of your pocket and keep chasing your fortune. Good way to go broke, I warn you. <laughs> or you can enter a tournament uh, where you just buy in for a certain amount. And when you've lost that, well, you've lost. And if you do really well in a game, of course, you're going to get to what's called heads up. And that's when it's just you and one other person fighting it out for the title or the big check. Uh, and that uh, takes, takes us hold them to a whole new level. Yeah. It really is all about the psychology there. You're really not playing your cards at all. You're just playing your opponent, and it's incredibly exciting. Would you say for beginners, Texas Hold'em is a good place to start? Texas Hold'em is the place to start. It's, it's a very simple game. You can learn it in half an hour. It's one of the, the old cliche, you know, 30 minutes to learn it, a lifetime to master it is absolutely true. What we're going to do now is take a little look at the ranking of hands. Yes, this is vital. You need to know what beats what. So starting at the very bottom of the heap, we have a high card. That's when you've got cards which just don't relate to each other and one of them is higher than the others. Moving up, we have a pair. Pretty self-explanatory, two cards the same and three unrelated ones. A bit better than that is two pairs. Again, it does what it says on the tin. Moving up, and we're getting into some quite decent hands now, three of a kind. Again, fairly self-explanatory, three kings, three tens, something like that, and with two unrelated cards. Better than that is a straight. That's five running cards in different suits in order. Then there's a flush. Five cards all in the same suit in no particular order. Moving up, a full house. That's three of a kind with a pair. Extremely powerful, but it can be knocked off its perch by four of a kind. You won't see this too often. It's as rare as hen's teeth. Then there's the straight flush. That's five running cards in the same suit in order. Extremely powerful, but it can be beaten by the big daddy of them all. That's the royal flush. That's a straight flush, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. That's unbeatable. All right, Grub, are you going to show us actually how to play Texas Hold'em? Yep, and I promise you it's going to be painless. What we <laughs> first have to decide is who the dealer is. Now, this is called the dealer button, and this represents who is handing out the cards. It moves around the table after every hand in a clockwise direction. In a casino, the cards will be dealt for you by a beautiful young woman mm. or a fat old man. I will be playing the part of the fat old man. So we'll say the dealer button is here. Now, before anyone gets any cards, there are two compulsory bets that have to be made. First, to the left of the dealer, we have the small blind, who puts in one chip. And over here is the big blind, who puts in usually double that amount. That's just to stimulate action. You want some money in the middle for there to be some jeopardy, mm -hmm. for there to be something to bet at. Poker's all about action, and the blinds provide it. Might seem a bit unfair, they haven't seen their cards yet, mm -hmm. but the dealer button moves around, everybody gets their turn. Once the blinds have gone in, we dish out the cards. Now, these would normally be dealt face down, but for the purposes of explanation, I'm going to deal them face up. So there'll be one there, one there, one there, one there, there. So two cards each. Those are your whole cards. And now the betting will begin. The small blind is in, the big blind is in. So the person who's first to act, or under the gun as we say, mm -hmm. is over here. Now he's picked up a jack nine offsuit. Not a bad hand. He has some options here. He can either fold, which means throw his cards away and not risk any money because he doesn't like them. He can call, which means equal the big blind, mm -hmm. or he can raise if he really likes his cards. In this instance, we'll say he's just going to flat call. He's going to equal the big blind and try and see a flop. Around to this gentleman here. He's got a 9-4 off suit. That mm -hmm. means they're not the same suit. Mm -hmm. uh, not particularly strong, but he might think any two cards can win. I'll have a look. So he puts his money in. Then we're around to the small blind. Now, the small blind has picked up what we call the big slick, mm. ace-king. Quite a powerful hand. Yeah. A lot of possibilities, obviously, of making a very strong pair. Uh, now, he has a choice here. He can either flat call or he could raise. I think he's going to raise. Mm -hmm. So we'll he'd equal the bet of the big blind and then put an extra bet in, which everybody else now has to equal to stay in the yeah. hand. Now, over here, the big blind's got pocket queens. Also a very, Good. very powerful hand. So he would certainly have a look at this. Now, he has a choice, of course. He could raise again. But we'll say he's a bit sneaky. Mm -hmm. He's trying to trap people. He wants to put just an equal bet in. 
The Jack-9 thinks, Ooh, oh God, there's a lot of action over there, but I've come this far, I'll put some money in. So he decides to equal it. He's got possibilities, obviously, of making a straight or perhaps uh, hitting a Jack or a Nine. The dealer, though, he knows that his cards aren't any good anymore, mm -hmm. so he'll throw them away. They'll go in the muck in the middle. The there we go. So now everybody who's still in the hand has put an equal amount in. We can go to what's called the flop. Now, these cards are dealt up in the middle. They're community cards, which everybody shares. We start with a burn card. We don't actually set it on fire. It's just taken off the top to show that the cards aren't marked. Mm -hmm. So that goes there. Then we get what's called the flop. This is three community cards dealt in the middle. The action starts to the left of the dealer. Now our player with the ace has hit an ace, mm. so he's got top pair. He has a choice here. He can either put a lot of money in, mm -hmm. or he can low play a little. Now mm. let's say he's in a trapping frame of mind. He thinks, if I bet here, they're going to be scared off, so I'm going to lure them in. I'm going to be mm -hmm. the big tempting piece of cheese in the mousetrap. So he is going to check. You can do that by actually saying, I check, mm -hmm. or by tapping the felt like that. That's a recognised symbol for checking. Over here, now the queens, well, he doesn't like the look of that ace, but he's pretty sure that guy hasn't got an ace because he yeah, didn't bet. Yeah. He's been lured in, so he will put some money in. Let's say he puts some money in to find out how good his queens are. Over here, the jack nine, well, that flop hasn't really hit the jack nine. Mm -hmm. There's no nine, there's no jack, there's very little chance of getting a straight. He knows which way the wind is blowing, so he's going to fold his cards. Mm -hmm. So once again, we're round to the little blind, and he is going to call that bet. He's going to think, right. I've got him to walk into my trap. It's all going wonderfully well. Mm -hmm. Two players are left in the middle. So there's our pot. And we're going to get another community card in the middle. This one's known as Fourth Street, or more commonly, The Turn. So once again, we burn a card to show there's no shenanigans. And here comes our turn card. In this case, the Six of Hearts. The action will begin once again to mm -hmm. the left of the dealer. He's got some choices. He can check or he can bet. Well, he knows that uh, the fellow over here is going to do the betting for him. So yeah. once again, he checks. Now, the queens, well, they know that that six probably didn't help anybody, so they're going to say, all right, we'll bet again. Mm -hmm. Put some money in. Decision time once again for the ace-king. He still has a pair of aces. He's going to make the call. So that, put, that money will go in the middle. And now we come to the last card in the middle. This one is called the river. Burn one, and here it is, the three of hearts. Over here, the ace-king has now got a decision to make. He's going to put all his money in the middle. He goes all in. That's the most powerful move you mm -hmm. can make in poker. The queens now are suddenly worried. Has this guy been slow playing an ace? Am mm. I behind? But I've come this far. I've really got to call. So he decides to call. The money goes in. We're all in. The cars will go over. And we'll see that the queens, a pair of queens, and that's all he's got. This gentleman will say, I've got a pair of aces. And aces beat queens. All the money is going over there. So he's won the lot. He's won the lot. So now we know the basics of actually how to play poker. Join us after the break and we shall be telling you which cards you should be playing and which cards you should be chucking. <laughs>